Welcome to a cast for Crows, the Game of Thrones focused po- podcast here on Dead Screen. We are talking about season five as a whole. We skipped uh, recaps of episodes nine and ten because of some stuff, and we got a lot of stuff to talk about. Most importantly, the the John stuff or whatever we were saying before, the stuff with John, John Snow. So, Joe, what happened to John Snow? Um, well, in probably the biggest shock of the show so far, he has been stabbed to death and by his Night's Watch by his Night's Watch brothers. And yeah, um, it would seem for all intents and purposes that he's dead. And there are a lot of theories about what's going to happen next, but you know, we saw an interview with Kit Harrington. He says he says Jon Snow is dead, and he says he's not going to return for season six. But of course, he's going to say that. But you know, what you guys as show watchers, what did you make so, of him being killed? You know, because we always assume he's one of the that he's going to be one of the focal points throughout the entire series. So you know, what were your reactions when it happened? So my big thing is. I know there's a lot of people talking about different ways he can come back and all that stuff, and I don't, you know, understand a, a majority of what they're talking about. But my big thing is, I don't want him to come back as Jon Snow. If he comes back as some weird something or other thing that is like barely kind of Jon Snow, like that's one thing. But if he comes back like fully fine as Jon Snow, it just kills that thing of Game of Thrones that I love so much where you like everybody's in danger at all times like that that scene was equivalent to the head grape smashing scene last season where you're just like the hell just happened like it you know it just kind of hits you like you know he walks up he sees the traitor sign and all of a sudden you're like oh shit this is bad and then there's just nothing you can do and then he's dead and you're like well He's gone. Dude's dead. It's all over. So I, I just, I won't want them to bring him back. If it's some weird, because I know it was either last season or the season before they showed the dude who like was healed from the cut or whatever, which they like, well, it was in a cave or something, right? Um, who are we talking about? I, I don't know his name. It, I'm pretty sure Arya and the Hound were, were with him. It was like a group of bandits or something. And the dude was like cut and he healed himself and he's like, yeah, it's the like fifth time I've done this or whatever. Oh, yeah, Beric Dondarrion. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> um, so that I was worried about them using that too much, like people being like hurt or killed or whatever and just like coming back to life and being totally fine. And I just don't want that to happen. I just, like, I don't, it sucks that he died, but I want him to be dead. That's <laughs> basically what I have to say about it. I'm guessing that's a very unpopular opinion. I think it is, but it's just, there's something very special to Game of Thrones that, if you're going to die, just let him be dead. None of the other big people that we loved came back, so he's dead. Just let him be dead. See, I already knew it was going to happen. <laughs> so you I suck. wasn't that surprised. It's you still suck. You need, you need, like, to be... You're not allowed to go on the internet during Game of Thrones seasons anymore. I didn't go on the internet. My cousin told me this. this you was need something to just I go slap, slap them in the before. face. Didn't he ruin something <laughs> else for you? Yes. This he kid, ruined a lot of things for me. No. I'm not having <laughs> it. So I'm not having I it. I wasn't surprised... It, I, like, was kind of hoping it wasn't going to happen, even though I knew it was going to happen. Like, when Cersei's scene ended, I was like, oh, okay, so it's over now, right? And then it, uh, it, like, went to the wall, and I was like, damn it. Um, But I I do think that Melisandre's going to bring him back. I don't think he's going to come back as Jon Snow, because I think Jon Snow is dead, and I think that's kind of what he was hinting at when he said Jon Snow is dead, because I don't think that we won't him again, because Kit Harrington will return, but he's obviously not going to say that he's going to come back if he seems dead, but um, as Joe and I have discussed, I think he is going to come back as Azor High, 
So that was the person who Melisandre thought Stannis was, and Joe can talk more about this than I can. Well, I think, you know, I want to talk about this from a book perspective, too, because, yes, John did get stabbed repeatedly and presumably killed, but all the circumstances leading up to it were very different because, for one thing, Ollie did not even, doesn't even exist in the books, and more importantly, Sir Alistair was not there at all. He, was, he had been sent away to Eastwatch, so, you know, I think on John's part, clear mistake to not do the same thing in the show. But the circumstances leading up to his stabbing were very different because he had received a letter from Ramsay Bolton in Winterfell, and he thought that um, his wife had gone to the Wall, and so he demanded John to return her to him, or he would have him murdered. He would go murder John himself. And, you know, there's a whole bunch of other circumstances I won't even talk about, but um, basically John wanted to rally the wildlings and go to Winterfell and help Stannis defeat the Boltons, only, you know, that would be forsaking his vows. He's not allowed to leave the Wall, no matter what. And then, if you guys will remember the giant named One One, he um, murdered a few of the Night's Watch brothers, and so basically, all that added up, kind of became the final straw for them. And then that was when a few of his other Night's Watch brothers stabbed him. Was before he could leave for Winterfell. And so, but the difference is. Um, I told you guys this earlier in the season that Melisandre, Shireen, and Solis had all stayed at the wall, whereas in the show they go with Stannis. And, you know, mm-hmm. now we now we know why they made that change. But you have to ask yourself, why would Melisandre bother going back to the wall now unless you're gonna have yeah. her revive John, you know? It just seems too obvious. Otherwise she could just go back to wherever she came from. Yep. No, I agree. I mean, it looks like she she messed like she knows she messed up, and she's probably like, uh, yeah, no, wasn't Stannis, my bad. And it's Let also fix this. it's also worth noting that in season three, we should remember that she ran into Beric Dondarrion and Thoros of Mir, and yeah. so and she kind of like she even she looked freaked out when she realized that um, Beric had come back to life like five or six times. And that's when she kind of realized, like, oh, wow, Red Priests have the power to bring people back to life. So, you know, you have to presume she's going to try to do the same thing with John. I think either that or, you know, we know the Night's Watch burns their dead every single time, no matter who it is. And <laughs> there's a very good chance that if they try to burn John's body, that that won't happen and so, you know, for us as show watchers, that could be a very clear giveaway mm. as to his parents, who his mm-hmm. real mother is. And you think you'll you you'll read that in the book before you see it on TV? I think. See, my number one theory, book wise, is that Melisandre will revive him. I don't think they'll. I don't think they'll even try to burn his body. I think uh-huh. he'll he'll either be revived, or I think he'll kind of warg into ghosts for a little bit. Uh-huh. And so, there's people, you know, there's people who think he's dead, and that's it. There's people who think he'll come back to life somehow, and then there's people uh-huh. who think there's people who think he'll be he'll become ghost permanently, because there will be no body for him to come back to, so to speak. So. You know, there's all kind of different things that could happen, but I don't think he's just flat out dead. He should the be. The storyline's just so unfinished, though. It's okay. Yeah, that's the point, though. I mean, it's just it's just kind of whether it's show or books, it's just kind of bad writing if you leave so many unanswered questions around one of the most popular characters, and then he's just dead, and you never really know the answer. You know. 
Like I know, yeah, I know, I understand I mean, you want. <laughs> I understand you wanting people to stay dead, but you know, in John's well, specific case, it's just bad writing. Yeah. So if you, if, if you leave him dead with so many unanswered questions, if he comes back, does he come back like the guy we met in season three or four or whatever, where he's just like, oh look, I'm the same dude. I just have a bunch of I don't stab wounds in my to. chest. Or does he come back like the dude we saw at the end of episode ten, where he kind of looks like a freaking zombie like he looks like he's dead or does he come back as like a white walker looking thing like what is what, when, when he comes back to life what does that mean Joe Do can we, you explain who Azor High is because I think that that's who he's coming back as and I think how do you it come would back, help how do you come back as somebody else that's a very good question it's not it's not entirely clear really I mean Stannis Stannis never died you know so he couldn't actually come back as Azor High. Um, Melisandre believed that he was Azor High in a previous life, so to speak, and that he had he was like the new um, incarnation, I guess, of that warrior. But basically, Azor High, according to legend, is basically just um, a prince that was promised and will deliver the realm from evil. Basically, you know, defeat the White Walkers in our specific case. But he was a legendary warrior who existed like hundreds of years ago, and Melisandre believed that Stannis was that warrior reborn. And you know, now of course we know that she was mistaken, but it's it's widely believed that John could also be that person reborn. But there's theories centering around a few other characters too that it could be. But um. You know, I don't know that it's possible to be reborn as Azor High, but my th my only thinking is that's I think that's a little too complex. My thinking is he will be revived, but the point is that having died, he won't be he won't be attached to the knights to his Night's Watch vows anymore. So he doesn't have to stay on the wall. He'll be free to do whatever he wants. You know. It's confusing, man. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not a book reader, so I can't say everything, but I I do know a little bit. I don't know. I think he's coming back as a Zora High, because I think that's what he meant when he said that Jon Snow is dead. But <laughs> <laughs> it just seems like a cop-out. I mean, I get it. In the terms of the book, There's pro and even in the show, like there's a lot of loose things that we're not getting. But, like... I don't know. I 100% believe Jon Snow is in some way coming back. I don't think he's dead. Yeah, but is he going to like just look the same and be like, oh, well, I'm not Jon Snow, I'm whoever. Well, he could be like, he could I'll come shave, back I'll like... i shave Barry my head Don to he signify come back, a different person. <laughs> he, he could come back like Beric Dondarrion did, though, and like if you'll remember, he was basically... If I remember right, he couldn't even eat or drink anything because... He's died so many times, he doesn't even need nourishment anymore. And he was basically a skeleton with, and he lifted his shirt, and his chest and stomach were just covered in scars yeah. from all the times he had been killed. And so, you know, I think, you know, he would still look like John, but, you know, maybe he'll be somewhat deformed, so to speak, because of, like because that's what that John. does. Yeah, exactly. Not necessarily, not in the form of a White Walker or anything, but yeah. more like yeah. the Beric Gondarian was. I don't know. Uh -huh. I'm just, it's it's walking a fine line with me. It sucks that he died, but there's something... It, they should stay dead in Game of Thrones. It's just, I don't, I don't think it's the end, because honestly, I think Jon's parentage is the Song of Ice and Fire. True parentage. And that would just kind of be like, this whole thing is basically about him, and that's it. Sorry. So yeah, I mean, I it's just bad. it would be Forget. bad writing, and they won't they won't allow that to happen. So, and no matter what, John has to come back for season six because he's going to portray his corpse. So Kit Harrington yeah. will be on screen next season, <laughs> no matter what. Mm. Okay. Well. Uh, what was the next thing we, we, we wanted to talk about? 
Stannis and Shireen, that whole thing? Because I know, Joe, you had some strong feelings towards that. Uh, yes, the only <laughs> the question is where to start. I guess <laughs> I won't go into the books yet. I will just say that um, I guess I don't know if this was a book spoiler or not, but Shireen is... They're all still alive in the books, actually. Shireen, Stannis, Solis, and, um, you know, <clears throat> I knew Stannis was bringing his family with him because they were going to do something. I figured some of them would die, but I think they absolutely, the showrunners destroyed Stannis' character by not only having him watch Shireen burn, but having it be his decision to do it. They decimated what was otherwise a very good character in the books, a character who would never have consented to that. And now it just became, you know, you guys as show watchers, I'm sure we're just like, oh, well, screw him, you know, I hope he dies now. And I'm sure you were glad when Brienne showed up to behead him. But, um, but yeah, that, uh, I want to know what your reaction was to. Shireen's burning since we never got to see a recap of this and I I found it it was just I found it extremely disturbing but on the other hand I'm glad they didn't actually show her yeah. burning I was glad they yeah. gave it I was glad they gave us a portrayal of like Stannis, Solis, some of their men and I thought it was kind of amazing to see that Solis was actually the one who broke seeing as she's like yeah. the religious nut yeah. And that that was what really made the scene for me. It was like, oh, wow, she's the one who's breaking, not Stannis. But, you know, what yeah, did you guys I, make of that whole thing, and what did your opinions become of Stannis after that? See, I, I agree with you, because when Felice broke, I was like, you know that you're doing something really fucked up if, like, Felice breaks and Stannis is just standing there. Like, she's crazy. So I was just like... I don't know, it was probably one of the few scenes in the show where I actually teared up. Just, I don't know, I, I don't know if it's just, like, Solis's, like, cries of, like, agony and just, like, not wanting to see her die or just hearing Shireen crying of agony, like, begging her father not to do this. But it was, it, it did destroy Stannis for me. I was really happy when he died. You know, it just seemed out of place. I did seem like, I agree. They spent the whole season sort of building him into this person that, like, you're finally like, okay with and you like. And, like, you know, he just... The show made him seem like a bad guy through all the other seasons. And this season was really where they started to change that. And it, like... It didn't make me hate the character. It just made me confused. Like, it just seemed so out of place that I was like... This... It just it didn't even seem like the same person because it seemed so just wrong and out of place. Like even when he like he's standing there and she's breaking down, it's like that's backwards from what you've told me was going to happen all season just based on learning about these characters. And so, you know, I was kind of indifferent when he was killed. I still like his character. I think it's interesting. It's like he kinda has this like gambling attitude with it. It's like he doesn't ever get fully prepared in the show. He's kind of like rolling the dice on each thing, you know, and, you know, being a little bit successful or being not successful and kind of going and going. It seems like this was his final, like, big role because, you know, he lost all the men because uh, Ramsey's little secret attack or whatever, and then a bunch of other ones left after that. So it's like... I don't know. It, it, it just seemed out of place, but... I mean, I wasn't necessarily excited he died. I thought his death scene was very cool, uh, aside from the fact they didn't show anything. His, the you know, his attitude during that scene and Brienne's speech. I think the whole thing was that, that whole thing was interesting, but it just seemed backwards. Like, why build this whole thing up and then just like change the whole purpose of everything you've taught us all season? So I don't know. I, I do agree it's backwards because when uh, Melisandre was like hinting at killing Shireen again, like I, I don't know, just like he, they built him up to be like seem like such a caring father. I thought he was surely gonna say no, and then yeah. 
It does, it does seem like out of character because honestly, I didn't even like question him. Thought he was gonna say no again. Yeah, and that's the thing is, I feel like he's been put in that position. Characters in the show have been put into positions a couple times where you're like, I'm not sure which way you're gonna go because it's like either they're both bad or they're both good or you know, whatever, whatever. And this one seems so very clear cut. Like, yeah, he's gonna say no. He's kind of said it like five times already, and he was just like, yeah, let's do it. It's just like, uh, okay. Seems a little backwards, but whatever. But it did make me hate his character. I, I still was, I still stick to the fact that I was happy he died. Yeah, I can see it. It just was. It just seemed like it was just backward. Like it just seemed so wrong that I didn't. I couldn't revert on Stannis because it didn't seem like Stannis to me. It was just like, I don't know. Uh, but Joe, that was the battle that you were worried about seeing, right? Yeah, and they didn't and really I'm... show it. Yeah, and I want to talk so about why that was, Yeah, I want to talk about why that was a complete failure, in my opinion, because you know we spent all season. Not only was the show building up to that battle, we knew it was coming for a long time, and you know I was worried about it coming because it hasn't happened yet in the books, and so I was like, oh no, you know I'm gonna find out who's gonna win and lose this battle, and. Then in the end, not only, you know, they have Stannis lose half his men, they deserted him after, um, a lot of the swords deserted after burning Shireen, and then that was it. Ramsay and his army come at them, and then they just kind of show Stannis, and then that's it. They cut away, and then the battle's done, and... It's so different from the books at this point that I'm. It, that doesn't even convince me that Stannis will lose the battle in the books. Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. Was mm-hmm. like having not had seen that. Are you? Do you think he's gonna die in the books that way? Do you think? Um, I mean, I always, I've always suspected he'll die eventually anyway, but I. I expected him to win that battle, mm-hmm. and I guess I kind of still do. I don't know if that's naive or not, but to tell you, I can tell you now, um, a major difference in the book is that they spend most of the fifth book, you know, traveling to Winterfell. They're being, um, they're held up by the weather, you know, the really bad snowstorm, but he still has a lot of men. The Boltons are kind of holed up in there, and I told you guys about this, that it's very, there's a lot of politics going on inside Winterfell. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of people for the Boltons, a lot of people against them, supposedly. You know, there's a lot of hints going on. But another big difference is that now that Stannis is dead, where on earth are Theon and Sansa going to go? Because at the end of the... I have to talk about that. Continue, but I have a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> at the, I just want to say, at the end of the fifth book, it ended kind of the same way with Theon and Sans, or well, you know, Theon and Fake Arya escaping, but they went to join Stannis, and so that's the point: is that even near the end, Stannis still has various characters coming to join him and his army, and so it makes it far less predictable what's actually going to happen in the next book. And so I was just. I was just so disappointed to see that they didn't even show a battle at all. That they just made it, it into a, basically a no, a no contest. I my my thought was that they that was like to kind of deal with the fact that the book's out. They're like, hey, you guys have been waiting for this battle the whole time. We're just gonna skip it and let you read about it when it comes out, and we'll just sort of show you some of the stuff that happens at the end. Like that's kind of the vibe I got because it seems they've never done like it just seems so out of place from the way they've normally attacked big fight scenes that you've built up all year, you know? Yeah, yeah it was kind of I don't know it was ridiculous, but I mean it can't happen the same way though because Brienne is somewhere else entirely. She's not in Winterfell, and um, you know you got other characters who are in other different spots, so. I don't know, but as far as getting back to Theon and Sansa in the show, what did you want to talk about with that, Andy? 
for the sake of my sanity, please <laughs> tell me what happened in their last scene. Uh, because <laughs> made me so angry. They're just like, oh shit, we gotta escape. Oh look, there's nothing down there. We <laughs> never showed anything again, and I got so mad. Yeah, they pretty much jumped off a wall that was at least fifty feet high, and I, you know, I'm not sure how they're supposed to survive that. So, but how, how, what, what are the possible? They landed options? on the soft snow, Joe. Okay, so if that's the answer, I'm furious that they just like <laughs> are gonna jump off and land in a big old pile of snow. That is makes me so angry. Like, <laughs> opening scene next season is them just like poofing into the snow and then getting up and walking away like, oh. oh. <laughs> I just... Like Especially I was, with Theon being as deformed as he is already. You know, like, that whole scene up to that point was awesome. And then all of a sudden, they just do this little stupid jump. I don't know. I'm just not happy with it. <laughs> it seems Alexa, like a cop-out. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, no, I liked the scene before. it. I was so glad yeah. that Theon manned up. But yeah. And I was, I was seriously like, if if he doesn't kill her, I'm gonna be so mad. So I was glad that he did. But yeah, I mean, it was kind of ridiculous because I was like, did they just kill themselves, or, or are they like, is that supposed to be like, I don't know, are they supposed to survive that? Because that was a really high jump, and I don't know if it's supposed to just be kind of like the snow like caught them and they were fine and they just nope. walk away. Not having it. But like. But, like, I just, I don't think they kill themselves. Yeah, but the, so what do they do? That. It's just... <laughs> I don't know, maybe they have, like, broken limbs or something. This is one of those things that, to me, feels like the writers just don't know. And they're like, well, let's make them jump off and we'll figure it out and then we'll we'll, we'll deal with it. Like. Well, I don't think they're dead. Ugh. Oh. Yeah, it feels like they're... I mean, you have to remember, too, after this... Now that this season is done, the writers are flying blind at this point. They have no more written material to go off. You don't, so, you don't think that they, the writers will get, like, parts of the manuscript that's completed thus far? Because, I mean, I know, you, you believe that you're going to read the next book before the next season, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, it's more of a... It's more <laughs> praying, I guess. Okay, so, I, but I mean, he has to have something done. He has to be done just to, like, some extent where they think they're going to get it out in a, a year, two years, something like that. I know they're not saying anything, but you're saying he's published some chapters online already, right? Yeah, I mean, he's published some chapters online. You know, the last book came out in 2011, so it seems like a good bet that right now... If I had to guess, I'd say he's probably 75% done with it. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's supposed to be like a 1,500, 2,000-page book. So mm -hmm. um, I know the, the writers, David Benioff and Dan Weiss, have had meetings with George Martin mm -hmm. where he's kind of... He's given them a general outline of how the story will play out in the end. But you have to remember, they've taken away so many characters in the show or from the show that don't come in at all. And this season especially, every st single storyline went off from the books. Like, most of them kind of had similar endings, but how they get there was so far off at this point that I'm convinced that they're not even going to bother using much of Martin's material anymore, and mm -hmm. they're just kind of... They're going to tell their own story, I think. I think, it's, I think they're two completely different mediums at this point. And, you know, we saw that with Stannis. We saw it with, um, uh, well, we'll get to, maybe we'll get to Dorne later. I don't know. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think, I just think in a lot of ways they are flying blind. And, um, like, they have generalities to go off of. But, I, you know, who knows if they'll even use that at this point. I'm not convinced that they will. So what does that mean for you as somebody who likes to, like, who is such a fan of the books and seems like you know such a fan of the TV show, for them to sort of start off being very similar and sort of kind of take these these two big different paths. I think 
see, I, I think largely for the first three seasons, they stuck by everything that happened in the books, and I think it was largely fantastic, the outcomes. But with season four, and much more so in season five, they've continued to veer further and further off because that was when Martin really expanded the world much more. Mm-hmm. But, you know, obviously, due to budget constraints, the show can't do the same thing. But if you're going to change something from the books, no matter what it is, you better make it at least as interesting, if not more interesting. And I think in a lot of ways, this season, they failed in that. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, the Dorn storyline is a prime example, because almost nothing happened, you know. Um, Alexa built them up so much. Yeah, seriously. And then... Um, I didn't know. <laughs> but, you know, that's the thing is, I don't mind them doing it differently from the books at all. That's, In fact, I encourage that, because it means, as we go on, it means less spoilers for me uh-huh. as a reader. Mm-hmm. But... When there's when there are things that are clearly filler, that's that's where I have to say, you know, okay, I understand you have time and budget constraints, but come on, you got to do better than this. Like, uh-huh. you can make it different from the books, uh-huh. but make it interesting, you know. Like we complained about Tyrion um, and Varys riding around in a box for three episodes, yeah, doing nothing until he suddenly. <laughs> had to walk around for a little bit, and then he gets kidnapped, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, like, what's the point of having them ride around in a box? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you only have one hour to fill a week, you know. Just keep the storyline moving. It doesn't have to be deaths. It doesn't have to be battles. But just just keep it moving at a decent pace. That's Mm -hmm. all. Yeah. You know, the the thing about Tyrion, you know, I I think a lot of that is, is just Peter Dinklage. I think people like him and they want to see him on screen. So if, like, you know, the lady who, who plays Brienne, like, she only showed up in maybe maybe four episodes yeah. total. And, like, you could have very easily mm-hmm. cut out, cut Tyrion out of, like, two or three of those episodes. But I think he's, like, one of the big stars and people like seeing him. I think he's a lot of people's favorite characters, so they added in those things just so, you know, oh, here's our... Peter Dinklage scene of the week, and it's him complaining about writing in a box. And you know, it was a, it was funny. Like it, it's, he's a good actor, and I like to watch him. But it did feel like filler. I, I think you're right. But if I have to assume, because he's the only character I think that was in all ten episodes, was uh, Tyrion. If I have to remember, probably yeah. We, we can check that, but I, I bet. I think he, he definitely was in all ten, but I think he's one of the only few who is in most of them. Um, yeah. So I, I think that's part of the reason. Well, I think with the Brienne thing, with her not being in like a lot of scenes too, just had to do with she's doing a lot of stuff outside of Game of Thrones lately. Mm-hmm. She's doing she's going to be in the new Hunger Games movie and she's going to be in the new Star Wars movie. So I think that's also why they just kept like didn't put her in a lot of stuff, but I do agree that some of it was just a lot of filler with just so much Tyrion. Like, I get it, Peter Dinklage is awesome, but we don't need to see him every single episode if there's nothing of sub- like yeah, substance. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I'm with you. Um, and go ahead. I also feel like there were times this season where events just kind of happened, like they popped up out of nowhere, and I feel like the it just so happens that Ramsay's entire army misses the fact that Stannis is still alive. The king, the one they want to kill more than anyone, somehow Ramsay's entire army misses that he's still alive, and yet they all trot back to Winterfell, and yet, oh, look, there's Brienne. Pops up out of nowhere, literally. Somehow avoids everyone else in Winterfell, Ramsay's entire army, and she just kind of shows up and then kills Stannis. Like yeah. how did how how did she do that? You know, and it's like it's like I understand. Like I'm glad that happened, but there's no build up or explanation as to how she managed to get there. You know. Yeah. And I'm just like, and there were several points where that happened this season, and it just it just kind of felt like bad writing more than anything else. Yeah, I can see like that. Things were just like you know, 
Like, oh, we know the fans will enjoy this. We don't really need to explain it, but we'll just make it happen, and no one will question it. But yeah, but I don't know. That maybe I'm just being overly picky. But I mean, I agree. There were kind of some scenes, like when we were when we saw Tyrion and Valantis. They showed that other Red Priestess, and I was like, okay, cool. I mean, is that she like talked for about something? Daenerys for like a yeah. second? Is that set up for something next season, maybe? Like, I feel like there are... I don't know. I mean, it just felt like filler, but it could be. If if it is important, it did not do a good job of, I don't know, expressing that it's important. Mm-hmm. So, do we want to go through a rundown? Because we, we had a lot of... We lost a lot of people in the last two episodes. Yeah. So... Do we want to sort of go through and talk about each one of those briefly? Um, I'm not going to be able to remember everybody. I know uh, the Marcella one was an interesting one to me. I thought the whole thing with her and, and Jamie was... First off, you knew the moment before she even got on the boat when What's-Her-Name kissed her. You knew it was going to happen. Like, Yeah. It, that kiss was way too long. Yeah, and it was too, like in focus and, like, fancy or whatever. It it just seemed too obvious to me. But that whole scene I really liked, and I just thought it was interesting that she was one of the people we lost that episode because we only really knew her for, like, two episodes maybe, a total of, like, what, 15 minutes screen time? I thought it was a very touching scene with, you know, her and Jamie and... I kind of figured she was basically doomed to die because it was a very uh, heartwarming scene. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Jamie yeah. told her that he is her father, and, you know, she was very, not only accepting, but she was very happy about it. And mm-hmm. um, yeah. I want to I say that despite not really being surprised, this was different from the books because another one, that, that's another one that's still alive. And... Um, there was an attempt on her life in the books, but it had nothing to do with the Bland Snakes or Ilaria. And she survived, and but she had her ears sliced off gruesomely. And, um, but yeah, she's that's another one that's still alive. But um, So in, in the books, did she make it back from Dorne, or is that just something totally different? It's something totally different because Jamie didn't... Jamie never went to Dorne, and... Um, to my, I, if I remember right, she's still in Dorne. She's just they they wanted to move her somewhere else. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, there was a failed attempt on her life, but she is still alive. But um, what I want to ask you guys to try and get some little bit of interest out of the Dorne storyline, um, do you think? Do you really think that Prince Duran, um, do you think he knew nothing about that? what Ilaria was going to do. Do you really think, when he when he kind of threatened to kill her if she didn't behave herself, do you guys really think he meant that, or do you think it was all for show? And so, do you think he was actually in on the murder? I don't think he was in on it, because while, yeah, he, while he did threaten her a lot, there was like one of those times, you know, he might have not killed her if she did anything, but there was one time he did really threaten her when there was like nobody else around. So it was like... They showed this yeah. scene. I'm pretty sure it was just them in the top area, and, and this must have been like episode two or something early on. And he was basically telling them, telling her to calm down or you know relax, as he wasn't going to have this. And he, you know he got basically told her not to do any of this stuff, but nobody was, else was around. So it seems like it seems to me like he was very genuine about all of that stuff. It's even even when he was talking around everybody else, it just seemed. Very genuine. I didn't. I I didn't even think about it until you just brought it up that he might have been involved one way or another. No, I don't think so either. I don't know. The I don't know if it was last season. Oberyn was like, "We don't hurt girls in Dorne." Yeah. Or it was this season? But like, it it seems like they live by a certain code where they don't do anything to children. That they're like, I don't know. They seem more like liberal and they don't really like human rightsy and stuff and. I don't know. I don't think that he would knowingly do anything like that, mm-hmm. sir. It, it doesn't seem like he 
is vengeful, at least with her. Like, it's... She was not even remotely involved with Oberyn's death, so I don't think he had any intention of killing her. So, I, yeah, I didn't even think about it until you mentioned it. I, I don't think he was involved in any way. It makes it sound yeah, like, really. like, as a book reader, you have different assumptions. Well, I know what his... <laughs> I know what his... Um, I know what his plans on the surface are, and I know what his plans beneath the surface are, and they're two completely different things. So, I, I, there's a theory in the book that he was involved in the attempt on Marcella's life, but it's not really, uh, it doesn't seem likely, but, um, but yeah, all I will say is I wouldn't necessarily get attached to the whole oh, we're loyal to King Tommen deal. Yeah, and you know, I didn't necessarily believe that. I thought it was more mm -hmm. of that, you know, we may hate these people and not care about them, but I'm not going to chop off this little girl's fingers. Like, we're a little more civilized than that kind of yeah. kind of thing. Because it seemed like if maybe he had Jamie and they were trying to make a statement, he'd be a little more willing to do something, but... Um, not sure. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think, I think, yeah, I think it's like that, like, this girl had nothing to do with it, why am I going to hurt her? Yeah. Kind of thing. Um, so to sort of finish this off, I know there's still a lot of stuff we want to talk about, uh, so I think maybe we could do another one of these again next week to sort of hit some of these points we haven't, we haven't, uh, touched on. Uh, but I think something we wanted to do was to sort of rank this season in terms of like on a, a 1 to 10 scale and sort of see what everybody else thought and discuss that a little bit. So Alexa, you go first. I go first? Okay. Okay, so the season started off super boring and just super slow. So I have to say that I don't want to give it a super high score. I'm going to say like a 6.5 because... It did offer some of the better episodes that we've seen so far, uh -huh. but it, it started off really slow. But there were a lot of high points. Like my, One of my favorite things is honestly the Night's King. I thought yeah. that was awesome. It made yeah. everything else seem so petty. And I think it just put everything in perspective. So those like last scenes, or like those, I don't know, some of those last episodes were kind of like, oh, crap, kind of thing. So I'm going to, yeah, 6.5, because... There were some really lame episodes, but there were some that were like, oh my god. Yeah. So, so I'm going to do something similar. I'll, I'd probably do seven. Just because, and I, I agree with everything you said, I think it started out really slow. Like, the first four or five episodes, almost nothing happened. And then it ended really strong at the end of, like, you know, what was it, episode seven? Or episode eight, nine, and ten were all really pretty it was good. Episode eight. Yeah. And so my my thing is, even the boring episodes of Game of Thrones, to me, and I don't know if this is any more, it used to be like the quality of the writing and, you know, the story and all that stuff. Now I just think it's the relation to like the world and those characters. Like even the boring episodes of the Game of, of, Game of Thrones are better than a lot of other shows. Like there's nothing else on that I wanted to watch even though, even if those were boring, that was still the thing I was looking forward to all week. Yeah. So definitely, I I'm definitely with you there that it started out really slow, but I'd rather watch a boring Game of Thrones episode than almost anything else. More than Lost. <laughs> more yeah, more than Lost. <laughs> um, but I I did think you're right. I think this had some of the best parts out of any of the Game of Thrones seasons so far. Uh, but overall, mm -hmm. I, I, it felt very different. It just, and that is, it's probably because of the source material is starting to get more, you know, unsure and, and more spread out at this point. But it just felt, it felt so focused and strong the first couple of seasons, and it's really starting to kind of lose that edge that it's had thus far. Yeah. I'm going to be a little bit uh, more critical than you guys, and... I'm going to go completely middle of the road and rate it a 5 out of 10. And, you know, this is much more from a 
book reader's perspective, I guess, but, you know, as you guys talked about, largely the first half of the season was very slow, not a lot happened, and I felt like it only took off with that battle that ended in Sir Barristan getting killed, mm-hmm. and, um, mm-hmm. you know, but despite that, there were still moments that were fantastic, you know, all of Hard Home was just brilliant. Uh-huh. Um, mm-hmm. I thought, Sir, I want to say I thought Cersei's storyline was wonderful. I thought Lena Headey did a terrific job. Um, I thought, also shout out to Jonathan Price who did a terrific job as the High Sparrow. Um, but for all the high points, there were also you know low points that we've talked about here, um, particularly with Stannis and his storyline, that I thought just they just kind of failed in comparison to the books for various reasons and. You know, we'll talk about more of those next time. But, um, you know, I thought there were a lot of good points and a lot of low points. So, yeah, I'm going to stay middle of the road and say five. Five for season five. So it seems like the more you know about Game of Thrones, the less less you enjoyed this season. I should have gone just 7.5 so I could be that yeah, you should have gone 7.5. So I could be that one point above Alexa. One point. One point away, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> probably probably uh, summarizes us pretty well in terms of all that stuff. <laughs> okay, well, I guess uh, this was our attempt at trying to recap uh, a bit of Season 5. I know we missed the last... Uh, we missed recapping Episode 9 and Episode 10, so we had a lot of ground to cover. Um and so I think as a group we'd like to get together again sometime next week and and sort of cover, cover some of the things we missed and talk a little bit about what we think is going to happen in Season 6. Yep, for sure. Yeah. We will be back next week, hopefully. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye.